Hello and welcome to the June 20th, 2023 Select Board meeting. We have the entire board present, our new member, Ms. Chase. We Thank have you. town manager, town clerk, various members of the public. Let us stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our June 6th uh, meeting minutes. I will make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> Linda, you were there too. Are you, is that, are you read? I'm right there. Right there. That's four. All right. Um, we have <laughs> our first public comment. So, any comments relating to anything other than the community garden? Please stand and speak your uh, name and address. Matthew Correct. Henry, 467 Hubbard Road. Uh, I want to apologize if I come off hostile at all first, uh, but I'm just genuinely concerned. This previous vote, um, there's 7,000 people or more that live in Berwick, yet less than 500 voted. I wasn't notified if I wasn't on. I'm a volunteer just like you guys. Um, I wasn't notified. I had no clue there was a vote. If I wasn't on the planning board, I wouldn't have known. So what? I, I just want to get some answers. Like, What protocols do you guys take besides like the one sign that I did see? It's on, it went, website, it's on the website, it's, uh, it's in the newsletter, it's in the library. Um, it's on the it gets, television. It's on the it's television. On the... It's it's out there. Everywhere okay. that we can and put it's it. A, it's in the town hall. It's a yearly vote. It right. Happens, it happens every year. Every yeah, year. James told me that and I figured that out now. So um, I guess uh, I don't know how to, how to say this. Um, so for the next vote, can I inform more people about it? Absolutely. In fact, I believe we have a committee like, yeah. that's dedicated to that as well. Um, well, the committee's not doing a great job. I don't think they've been active for. Yeah, yeah. The they're not doing a good job because yeah. I, I, on such an important vote that requ that in involves millions of dollars, mm -hmm. millions Absolutely. of dollars, right? We're in agreement. This is a lot of money. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and it's a very this is, this is vote, my yeah. property tax. Me and James are already having. I'm already. Re I'm publicly re requesting an abatement. Me and James have already talked about this. There was there was a the tax assessor. I'm reading this. The tax assessor is a what the owner. The owner made the the owner made the assessing office aware of the error of March 2023. So now the assessor is admitting to making errors, and the office is admitting to making errors. So I'm going to request an abatement on my property because I feel I was 100% taken advantage of. The pure fact that my home has been sold, I believe four times, maybe more. And my swimming pool wasn't on the tax map. A little suspect to me. I don't know what you guys think about that. Um, I'm being taxed on my chicken coop. Unjust. Um, but uh, aside from me, for the people of Berwick, uh, you know, because I am, I'm on the planning board. I'm a, I'm a patriot. I'm all for equality, and that's that, you know. So, moving forward, can we? Can I request a? A mailing, a simple mailing letter to let the people of the town know, because I know a lot of people in town. I have a lot of family in town. No one knew of this vote, and wow. my two uncles have lived here for over, well, one of them over twenty something years. So the school district actually sends a mailing every year to every household. And it happens it every year in June if they've lived in this the town for twenty election, years. So I'm just going to have to let people know of this vote. Everyone gets that. I'm just going to have to let people know myself, it sounds like. That, that is totally yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm going to put a sign out front of my house. That is totally fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, just publicly letting you know I'm, I'm requesting an abatement since this is, this tax assessing is admitting to errors. I, can, I have 32 minutes of this assessor overstepping her boundaries that while is, she was assessing my house on my property. That's your right as well. Yes, I know. Um, so yes, publicly, I would like to request an abatement of my property. I'm going to fill out the forms. James already sent them to me, actually, like a couple, like recently, like today. Um, 
Thank you for that, by the way. Um, but yeah, I just I just wanted to, uh, as a concerned citizen, I wanted to voice my my opinion, you know. And God gave me the right to do so. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak uh, on a matter other than the community garden? Yeah. Name Hi, my name is Don Ganarelli. I reside at 14 Sweetser Street. I am also on the planning board of Berwick. Uh, the vote of the 23rd to put up to two speed bumps on Sweetser Street uh, that was approved. Um, one of our homeowners made several, I, I think, phone calls and raised some complaints to the use of speed tables, which uh, I'll just read you some notes. Uh, James and I met today with uh, Jody mm -hmm. of the um, Public Works, and we went over the location that they had marked of the speed tables that we're using. Now, as you, you guys know, speed tables and speed bumps are two different animals. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman that has a concern about his car, it is a 23 Ford T-Bucket. Yes, it does have a low suspension. He has to use a ramp to get, he has to use a homemade ramp to get into his own garage, which is kind of like a speed table. It goes up and then he levels off on his floor and he doesn't hit his suspension. So a speed table will work the same way. He can go over it with his car. This car comes out of the garage maybe once or twice a year because it's a show car. It is not a daily driver. You can't drive it in the winter. You can't drive it in the rain. It has no top. So putting safety aside or the car aside, let's talk about safety. I think you guys know how concerned well, I know you guys are concerned about safety. And by the way, Lisa, congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I meant to say that first. But uh, we're all concerned about safety. The, uh, I did some measurements on Annie Street, which has two speed bumps and some signage. I was informed that the signage was ordered today. Um, we talked about using the first speed bump, which is in front of this gentleman's garage before his garage, and he will clearly be able to see that his car will go over it. It's simple physics. It will go over it. The tire is going to hit first. It's going to gradually go up. It's going to level off just like he goes into his garage with his homemade ramps. But I will tell you that the people on Sweetser Street want these two speed tables now. It's kind of all or nothing. Because if you put one in, they're going to speed the rest of the way to the stop sign, it's not going to make any sense. So just bringing that point up, uh, the James saw the turnout we had today, the people on Switzer Street that have resided there for many years that signed a petition, want these speed bumps and they want them now, or the speed tables and they want them now. And I don't think that's unfair. Um, I did all the homework. I would like to show this picture to the board. Um, this is a car traversing a speed table. And then the one after that is a car trying to get over a speed bump, and he built a ramp, kind of like a speed table. And you may keep this. Let me pass this around if you would. Um, just some simple physics. At the speed of 25 miles an hour, it takes approximately 85 feet to stop a vehicle. That's between the reaction time when you see a kid running out in the street to the time you can actually stop your vehicle at that speed. So I'm going to pass these out. You guys can have these. And I would ask that we re-vote on this and get back to business here. The people on the street, and this is going to be my probably my last comment, are very passionate about this, and they are so concerned that um, the homeowners will secure legal representation 
if we don't get this resolved. Because this has been a problem for a very, very long time. I brought all this up to James today. I was very forthcoming with everything. Um, I love our town. I'm a transplant from Pennsylvania. I was in the military for 20 years on submarines. Um, safety is my number one issue. If you make a mistake on a submarine, you're going to sink. So, any questions for me? I, I will give you I this copy. Made, I thought we made a decision already. I thought you I did, too. Yes. The, there is already a... We already have a vote on the record that we voted for up to two up speed to tables. Two. And then there was a discussion about possibly doing only one because of uh, some complaints about the the way the, the they would line they would line up in the road. But um, that was gonna be reviewed by Jody. Yeah, that was that was what's being and and he's saying that despite those complaints, they all want the two speed two tables. Speed and yes. the location is a very logical place. Right on either side of the driveway, pretty much where he doesn't want it is the most, it doesn't make sense to bump up any further or get him any. And did Jody look at this? Yep. And, and did and Jody put these in? They're painted, the they're paint. The proposed locations are um, both Josh, Pershy, foreman of public works, yeah. and Jody took a look at it and those. Right, but how quickly can they put them in? They can be put in, I think um, I you think said he's... about mid-July. Yeah. Second or third week of July. Yeah, we're still not in the new budget yet. <laughs> yeah. And that's if I, one of the suggestions. I think there's two op, two options in front of the board. Yes. And if I can make a point, if this is public care and it's not discussion public policy. Public. You know, yeah. So yeah. Is, um, and I think we should put this off to another time in the meeting under new business or old business or unfinished business. Now is not the time for it. We'll put it under unfinished business. Okay. Okay. Under, under Just, unfinished business. Yep. And I, I think, seriously, James has all the facts, so he can speak for the people in the neighborhood. We're, there was a petition. We all signed it. He has a copy. Well, you now have a copy of all my notes. So I think you can ascertain what the right thing to do will be. Okay. And I thank you all for listening. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak under public comment for anything other than the community garden? I'd like to make a comment. Is, uh, I thank everybody that voted for me this uh, last Tuesday. Uh, uh, congratulations and condolences to Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I'll talk to you at the end of three years and see if you still feel the same. Uh, and I want to thank everybody that didn't vote for me that came out to vote also. As we heard earlier that you no, know, only a little over 400 people voted. Unfortunately, that is something that happens most of our June votes. Um, and I do also want to comment about the public notice. And we've gone over this for months. We've talked about the budget. We've talked about the vote. We have the same vote every June. As Patty pointed out, the school sent out flyers to everybody reminding everybody there was a vote is I think that the town has done just about everything we can to make sure people know there's a vote coming out. And we've tried doing mailers in the past, and the day after the mailers come out, you go down to the post office, and a thousand of them will be in the garbage. And so it's, it's expensive to do that, to have everything end up in the garbage. So is <clears throat> we continue to try to get out the notices. Is Talk to your friends and family. Talk to your neighbors. Put a sign up in front of your house. If you want to get the vote out, let's help us do it. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? All right. I will close the first public comment. And now we have a public hearing slash approval of a community garden. Um, James? Give us some info on what we're talking about. So this is a community garden uh, proposed by members of Envision Berwick that um, the seed funding for this project will come from a community action grant. And we're holding a public hearing tonight to hear any concerns potentially from any neighbors or anyone that's supporting the project. Um, we did receive comments from 
fire chief, I think the main concern for the fire chief is obviously nothing blocking the trucks from being able to exit or enter the property. From Chief Town, um, the summary of his concerns, he would really like to see the entrance and parking area come off Logan Street. Um, and yes, of course it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's right there, right? Yeah, yeah, it's either Logan Street or the main entrance off the public, public safety way. way. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it would definitely come off Logan Street. Um, the only other thing I'd add is just depending on what's needed for the parking area or what's needed for structures, it just might be a site plan amendment through planning board. Um, but we can assist you at that time if that's and and for the for the record this the location that we're talking about is behind the public safety building um, to, uh, toward Logan Street so um, uh, the town manager and then the board received uh, looks like six letters from various community members and community organizations in support of the community garden I'm not going to read them into the record but They'll be entered into the record um, so that anybody can read them at a later date. Uh, we have the, the main petitioner of this community garden. Does she wish to say anything? Well, what can I possibly say except um, I hope that you will approve it this evening. We've I've met with so many different people and talked about and your name, please. For oh, the I'm public. sorry. Yes, <laughs> Omri de Cottrell. I live on at 8A Goodwin Street in Berwyn. Um, I've had conversations with lots of people over the last few months about this, and every single person I've talked to has, has had so much excitement about the possibility of this uh, project coming forward. So um, I haven't had actually one person who said, Oh, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. So um, I think that we can take care of all the concerns that, that have come forward pretty easily. We've talked about that, and we've come up with ways to, to you know, address those concerns. Any questions? All right, thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak about the community garden, whether in favor of or or against. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Brian English, 121 Old Pine Hill Road North. Uh, I'm uh, also the commander of American Legion, Legion Post 79, and part of the idea for this community project is to assist the veteran. And I wanted to comment, I also work for the Veterans Administration, do not speak for them at this setting, I speak as a private citizen <coughs> to make that clear. Um, but that being said, I am aware of the benefit uh, for our veterans that therapeutic gardening, gardening does for veterans with PTSD and coming back. It's shown that uh, gardening, getting out in the outdoors, working in the dirt is one of the best therapeutic. In the letter that I submitted, uh, there's uh, clear evidence from World War II going back that far that uh, it's called combat fatigue at the time, but it was used for veterans returning from World War II and it had a high success rate in helping them to readjust. Um, a lot of them came back and they worked in the victory gardens that their families had planted and it was really a good thing for them. And I know as a disabled veteran myself with 70% uh, uh, service connected for PTSD that um, sometimes um, getting in, getting my feet dirty in the garden and digging in the dirt is the best thing that I can do. And I, I highly support this. I've spoken to James about potential down the road of another issue separately about how we could continue with some of the ongoing funding because once we create this we want it to be a legacy thing that goes on and so if a nonprofit is established I'm uh, believing particularly if we can work out some of the issues with uh, a nonprofit status so that we can donate to the, uh, our post would be willing to help support anything that helps our veterans and we have funds available to see that that going forward will continue to be uh, able to be supported for anything that they might need to go well at least within reason that we can do of it, uh, to help them, but we want to be able to help. And uh, so um, as, as a citizen of Berwick, I highly recommend that. And as a veteran, I, I highly recommend that uh, this be approved and uh, that be allowed to um, be put in place to assist the veterans in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, friend. Please, stand right up. 
Hi, my name is Penny Zuss, 539 School Street here in Berwick. And I just want to say a few words to support the community garden. I have uh, spoken with Amrita, and uh, I know she's very passionate about this project, and I know she has the experience to make it come to fruition. And, and uh, you know, some projects in, in that you get going, if, if they don't have committed people behind them, they can kind of lag and fall behind. But I know that she, she's got the, the passion to make it happen. I also know that um, she wants this community garden to really bring the community together, support the community, support the community food banks, and I think that those are all really admirable goals. And so I just want to say I, I support it, and I hope that you will approve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy Caston, Blackberry Hill Road. Good evening. Guys brought in Penny Zuss. That's heavy hitters. Penny did the uh, <laughs> permaculture plan for my farm when, when we moved here. Um, I uh, I don't. You know how I feel. I just wanted to stand up uh, in an effort to give everyone who came here to support it an opportunity to stand and show their support for the community garden. And that way, you know that so many of these folks came here to do just that. So, would everybody who's here for this community garden? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. So it's um it's a you know obviously biggest it's very crowd exciting. We've had in a long time. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> That's the biggest crowd we've had in a long time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yep. That's not yelling at us. The <laughs> crowd pleaser. I think that that says it all, doesn't it? Uh, obviously, very very excited about all this. It's really a, a a wonderful opportunity, I think, to to do so many important things at the same time. It's really a great project. Thank you. Good to meet you, man. Does anybody else wish to speak? Does anybody from the board wish to speak on the topic? Um, I've, I've been involved a little bit with this. I've been uh, you know, coordinating with Amrita for some things. Um, I'm very supportive of this. I can't wait to start working down there personally. Um, I think that any minor you know, issues that may be before us can be resolved, and I don't see a problem with this. I All I see is, you know, things getting better and better from here on out. So, is, um, if, yeah. where I stand on that. Yes, um, The only thing that I am just going to point out is the parking concern that the police chief had. I didn't know if... Um, Walking through a walkway, it seemed like there was slippery rocks. Is the parking in the right place for the gardeners? It, it is, we, we've talked about that. There's, there's a possibility of a small parking lot up off of Logan Street, but also um, is uh, we've already started discussions of the 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 walkway between the fire station and the police station. There's the uh, drainage swale there with all the rocks and uh, putting a bridge over that oh, okay. you know, to you know, complete that loop so you don't have to crawl over the rocks. <laughs> Good. Any other comments? James, just for the record, how much um, is the grant for that you are expecting? Um, it will be for... Twenty-five thousand okay. dollars for the community garden, and then there'll be another twenty-five dollars, twenty-five thousand dollars for an open space plan. Terrific. Any questions, comments, anything? I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the community garden. I second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. It's something that has such universal support. It can only go really, really well or really, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that it goes really, really well. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who showed up for support. Please come to more meetings. There's a lot more things that we do and talk about. Besides. It's so exciting. And it's not just, you know, just once a year sort of thing. You guys are all the time. <laughs> you might like it so much you can sit here one day. Yeah. Hey, Penny.
Watch the head to start running. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we have no reports of committees. We have no department reports, appointments, and presentations. We have Stephanie Roche, Rochefort. How do you pronounce that? Rochefort? Hi, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank she you. is seeking to be reappointed to the uh, Sewer District uh, Board of Trustees for a three year term. Would you please stand for us? Yes, I'm Stephanie Rochefort. I live at 61 Key Road. And I am um, looking for another three-year term on the Berwick Sewer Trustees. What uh, We have a really, really good board of trustees at the Sewer District right now. We all bring skills that all just work together. Uh, my skills are that I have 30 plus years of wastewater treatment experience with the City of Summersworth. And I'm able to steer the ship for, uh, we call it the big three things we focus on in wastewater treatment. The first is safety. The second is compliance with the, in, in Maine and the MIPIDES permit. And the third is doing all this with the best value for our ratepayers. Now, do you serve as uh, any particular position on the Board of Trustees? I've been the chair each, each year. Okay. Um, the board is such an interesting beast because, you know, it's part of the town, but it's not. And the only real, you know, input this board has on it is appointing the members to the trustees. Um, and it, that's become a little bit of an issue for us recently because we've been receiving some complaints from various businesses and, you know, uh, people coming into town who are concerned about the way that their rates are being calculated, things like that. And they... They come to us because they they want help, but we don't really have the ability to help in that situation because it's not our board. I mean, we just we appoint the members, and then you guys are kind of running off to to do your own thing. Um, but I do know that from complaints that we received, you know, overall we are a little concerned about uh, new businesses coming to town and then having to deal with. Um, what they might consider higher than normal rates. And um, discussions have been had about whether or not we can have options for a use rate instead of a flat rate. Um, is that something that can be discussed or implemented or worked on in this coming board where at the very least certain businesses or buildings or owners can opt for a usage rate instead of a flat rate? We actually did um, look at doing that um, based on water meter readings, which at this point we don't have access to. And really the kind of short answer is it won't really be saving any of the rate payers the money that they think they will because drinking water is different than wastewater. Everybody uses the same drinking water, whether it's in your household and you're drinking it, or whether you're making beer with it, or whether you are, goodness, tanning leather with it. You're using the same drinking water, but what goes down the drain to be treated is very, very different. We have a standard that um, the basic rate is based upon is with that domestic wastewater, and a lot of other sources, it's a higher strength. So if you looked at like the bucket of wastewater, what's usually in it for a domestic source, your commercial source has a lot more stuff in that and it's more expensive to treat. So even though there's less water, there's the same amount of stuff or even more stuff. And if we were charging them by how much water they used, there would likely end up being a model with a different rate for the commercial users, which is a model I've seen in other municipalities. So we sure want to make sure that everybody is treated fairly but, you know, I don't want to make any promises that it would make that people would be, you know, having a lower bill. No, I, 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 I understand that. Um, but it, it, as a board, our concern is that we're, we've been working for what feels like forever mm -hmm. to bring in businesses and developers to redevelop the downtown and... You know, we don't want to then have those developers get scared away because the, the sewer bills are going to be, you know, too, too, not exorbitant, but too high for them to really 
you know, make a go at it. You know what I mean? We want we want the downtown to thrive, and that is you know directly under the sewer districts. You know, um, purview. Oh, so. and the sewer district is you know definitely on board with the downtown thriving also. And we actually have um, comparisons of our sewer rates with other like-sized communities, and we are not exorbitant. Uh, a little while ago, you, you mentioned you know some places, uh, some districts have uh, uh, different rates for domestic and commercial. Yeah. Is, uh, is, it, is it just domestic, commercial, domestic, commercial, industrial? How, how do they break that down? Oh, well, you know, this is something that I do a lot of in my job and is, is to look at these different rates. Um, typically, there is the domestic rate, a commercial rate. A lot of times, restaurants are, char are charged a lot higher because of the oil and grease that goes yeah. down. And on top of that, they are required to have the oil and grease separators and have them maintained. But, you know, those aren't perfect. So they still are charged a higher rate. And then anyone that is an act, a true industry, whether it's a commercial laundry or some kind of manufacturer, they are also charged higher rates depending on what exactly they're manufacturing. Um, another concern that was brought up is the um, right now there's a lot of multi uh, multi apartment buildings going up, and that each one bedroom two bedroom apartment is going to be uh, is what I believe is going to be charged equal to any single family house on the on the on the spectrum. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, that is, and there's a really good reason for that. People that live in apartments and pay rent, they don't treat their pipes like those of us that own our homes, and we're very careful, especially people that have septic tanks, we're very careful of what goes down the pipes. People that live in apartments tend not to be. They tend to use their sinks and their toilets like trash cans, and they do tend to put higher strength waste down for us to treat. I have to say that's 100% accurate. In my in my experience, yeah. like I just I'm just picturing when I was a renter and I lived in a in a in an apartment that was on a sewer, versus when I live in a house that has a septic tank that 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 it is a difference. And especially if you're like on the second or third floor and if you're having to like walk trash all the way downstairs. Yeah, and, we can think. Yeah, no, you, you really, you really, you really made me flash back to years when I lived in an apartment. No, um, does anybody else have any questions? Although none of this has any relevant to your appointment, it actually is very, very interesting information. Yes, I, I, that's that's why I bring it up. Is that it's us, you know, for the record, you know, I want people to know. We have you in front of us, and yeah. that's why we're asking. <laughs> yeah, you just have to be the first person to walk up. <laughs> yeah. And luckily, you're you, you're the chair as opposed to the next person who might not be. You know, they might not have all the good answers. I'll make a motion that we reappoint Stephanie Rocha for to a three-year term for the sewer trustee. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Um, I just you no know, want to say that is, I, I think that you know we had the meeting with. Uh, trustees last year mm -hmm. I thought that was very helpful I think that's something that we should probably do at least a couple times a year you know we'll sit down together and uh, you know just talk about these things and uh, we can go into more detail then oh, definitely. yeah I definitely think maybe once a year especially you get like I missed that meeting and I know we have a new person so just so it's informative so if people ask we give them yeah, an informed right. answer yeah is set motion and seconded any further discussion all those in favor? Thank All right, you. you can go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, under unfinished business, uh, to finish the discussion on speed tables. Mm -hmm. So yes, we had um, the, the group come in, they petitioned, we discussed it at length, and we voted to put um, up to two on, on Sweeter Street, what was the other street? All Sweetser Street, oh, both yeah. on Sweetser Street. No, no, there was another road. Oh, well. Dobson, yeah. Dobson, Dobson Street. Yeah. Uh, as well as increased signage for yield, slow, children at play, right. double fines, whatever it was. Um, and after that meeting, James had gone out, uh, well, Jody James, they had gone out to 
planned that, and it was um, one particular property owner was unhappy with where it was going right. to land. Right, I remember because it and was co antique. I remember the antique car yeah. thing. Essentially, the way it came down is that you want they wanted to put two, and wherever this was going to come out would come out right next to his property. Yeah. And it didn't make any sense to put it anywhere else. Like you'd be, you'd have had yeah. two back to back, or you'd have had them way too far away for it to make any sense. Yeah. You just go over one, and then you speed down the majority of the road, and then you have the other one. So um, we had discussed the possibility of just putting in one, and then seeing how that went before putting in a second one. Um, but the public clearly wants two, yeah. despite what this singular homeowner is concerned about. Um, and in terms of uh, the concerns brought up, um, if Jody thinks that it's possible to do two and that it's not going to diminish his property value and, you know, we're, we're well in the clear, then I don't think there's any reason to, to not give them the two that they want. One of the compromises in the neighbor, neighborhood was supportive of it is going to a, a 20 foot, um, speed table, um, closer to Memorial field. A 20-foot speed table is a design speed of in the range of 25 miles an hour, and a 14-foot speed table is about in the range of 20, 20 miles an hour. So the, the one closer to Rochester Street would have a little bit of a slower design speed, and then the one closer to Memorial Field would be less gradual, and it would just give that neighbor a, a better opportunity. If that 14-foot one was too abrupt, 20, 20 foot one would be a little bit less abrupt. If that's a fair compromise and that makes them happy, then I have no yep. problem with that at all. And yeah, it slows them down. Yeah. Um, yeah, the obvious goal is just to make sure the road is safe for kids to be there and not have to worry about getting smacked by a car every every five minutes. <laughs> you know, the, um, the uh, other concern is when it was able to be done. So uh, July, mid July is what we're talking about. About the second or third week of July. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a, I mean reasonable, but also economical. Our budget doesn't kick in until July first, too. Right. So we don't yeah. technically have the money to put them up now. So, nope, not technically. We don't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, techni technically correct. The best kind of correct. Yeah. Um, all right. So, are there any reference? other yeah. <laughs> are there any other questions or comments about the speed tables? No. All right. And we do not need to take a vote on this. It's already been voted and approved. Yeah. Town managers report. We did have one uh, member of planning board resign due to some work obligations. So there be one. There's one vacancy on the planning board, and I'm aware of several people that are interested. So we'll post that. They can see, and they'll be on the agenda for our next meeting on the 18th. Uh, James, is that one or two open? Because they, it's the one. last planning, okay. Because it sounded like they were talking about two at the last yeah, planning meeting. Yeah, it's just, it's okay. just one. And just, just to make sure I remember correctly, we already have a, we have a seven member board. We no longer have the two alternate. right. alternates. Right. Okay, yes. Yeah. So we have a seven member board that currently has six filled seats. One will be available to be filled. Yes. Uh, Email James if you're interested. I've received two requests to put another speed table on Maple Lodge. Uh, folks are driving up Jordan Street the wrong way. I have notified Chief Town and police will monitor that area. Um, so I don't know if we want to consider another public hearing for Maple Lodge or it's just something that possibly should be planned for next year it does eat into the road budget funding or just try to see if monitoring Jordan Street will imp improves the situation. I think we could start with just monitoring and seeing what's happening. See if we get some feedback from the police. Yeah. If the police say do it then that'll be a different situation then. The last thing I have is the appeal for the um, Willie abatement was granted by the York County Commissioners, I had a discussion with our attorney. Uh, there may have been a flaw with the commissioner's vote because they granted appeal based off value, which by law they have a specific window that they're able to do that. They can 
uh, overturn it on the base of a voting of the assessment being illegal, but whether or not the assessment was illegal is kind of a gray area. One of the examples of an illegal assessment is when an assessed property is attributed to the wrong owner, which this isn't exactly what happened, but it's pretty close where an accessory dwelling unit and kitchen was assessed to the wrong owner. So our, our attorney believes that it would be likely that when the window does open up for Ms. Mr. Willie, that he would have been granted the appeal anyways. So I don't think it makes sense to fight it and just, it was ended up being 313 some odd dollars that just let it lie where it's at. It's the one we granted the abatement for we one year, one but year, then not the second because year. of yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, in terms of in terms of our obligation as a board, we met that. We right. could only we can only approve up to one year. Um, so we couldn't approve the second year unless we even if we really wanted to, right? I think you have to find in the legality in the assessment yeah. based on the value, which was which was the way the angle that, that the appeal was. Yeah. That was the path he went for the basis of the error and value. You either have to do it, I don't know, I couldn't tell you why, but it's 185 days after um, commitment, or you have to wait another half a year, and then it's after a year using that window where you're not legally allowed to appeal it. Yeah, so basically the appeal was granted in spite of it being and in spite of it being wrong, um, but at this point it would cost us more to us appeal. More money to go back and. But in general, we we met our obligations, and the appeals did not meet their obligation. Essentially, I mean, yeah, you can say something. Go ahead. <laughs> we'll be held against you. <laughs> <laughs> I just not not on this board. No, yeah, yeah, not on this board. If you have, well, if you have another board, it, board. It, it may. I mean, I missed the original meeting. Yeah. And I get what you're saying about this board can only go back one year. Yeah. But in looking at it, and you're and you're splitting hairs with the 85, 185 days, it still comes back. And over just a couple of years, I've been sitting here. There have been a lot of errors, mm -hmm. and the error was the town's. It, it wasn't his. And you're talking about. Two consecutive years. I mean, it would be different if you said, oh, this error occurred 10 years ago and you never noticed. Well, it, it's two consecutive years in a time period where there was some assessments, reevaluation done, so it wasn't a major hiccup that it was noticeable. So when he notices it, he brings it to our attention, whether it was him or anyone else. It's, I, it, I just think, how do you not give the guy... No, I, I'm not... I'm, I'm not saying he's fairness. wrong to be to be annoyed or frustrated. He absolutely is. I think he's justified in being being frustrated and everything like that. And I think that in terms of a ethical argument, yeah, he, it's it's a mistake. And you know, but in terms of a legal argument, you know, we only can do so much. Right. I mean, it's, it'd be different if it was an assessment, an opinion of an assessment done in his house. Yeah. He thought it valued this. The assessor thought it valued this. This was the whole wrong house. This was like not even his house. Oh yeah, I watched this. Yeah, it wasn't even his house. No, it, it, and, it, and that's why we approved the abatement that we could because it was wrong and we could, you know. Yeah. But, but it is legally it falls to the property owner to make sure their tax card is right. Yeah, it doesn't and, and fall that's, to the town. It falls to the property owner. And it is, it's, it, and it is, I understand anybody who might be frustrated by it, but yes, it is the responsibility of every property owner to make sure that their property, if I find out that I've been overpaying my taxes for 10 years, I'm not going to come in here asking for 10 years worth of abatements because I know you can't give it, you know? I should have checked 10 years ago when I bought the property and it was wrong. But it's, it, it is frustrating, but that is, You're so right. everybody. That, that's just, it's just, and that's it, it. It's it, the frustrating part of. Of, you know, Everybody out there, go check your property card and make sure it's right. Yeah. And, and there's a, a reason, there's the time frame in there that gives them that opportunity. But 
after that time frame is over, it, you know, then legally we are in the right. You know, so for that one, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't just put it out there as an I, indefinite period. I know, no, I mean, and I, I get that. <laughs> I, 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 yes, Liz, what is it? So the first year, we were within the the scope of being able to do it for the we, first year. We can, uh, we can, we can grant an abatement for up to a year back. But, um, and people have, you know, tried to apply for as much as three years back because okay. the state of Maine will allow that, I think. But we as a town can only grant one year. And that's what we do. And then if they disagree with that, they can take it to the York County to appeal it, which this person did. And based on the facts, it should have been denied, but based upon their. But it wasn't over the year. It was, it was over the year. It was well, two okay. years. Okay, so we approved something we over approved the, the one. No, we approved the one year and right. denied the second year. Oh, okay. That's so the, the first year was under. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we, we did approve the, the, the year that we could. He asked for two. Yeah. yeah. He, got, he got one. Okay. Yeah, the, the whole basis is it hinges upon it being defined or found as an illegal assessment. And our attorney said that even can be a moving target. So it's you, you have to find it. It's very gray. Yeah. It's, it's gray. very gray. So what do you... Yeah, but yeah, and it isn't his house. It just, it just seems like every no. time, every he was time, for somebody else's house. Every time we bring an appeal or an appeal goes to the New York County, is they always find against us. They always, they always find a way to find against. We 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 did this with the uh, uh, the business storage storage facility. Yeah, and we went through this whole thing, and they initially granted the appeal, and then. Is Steve was the town manager at the time. He contacted one of the, um, the uh, commissioners and pointed out that we did exactly as we did this time around. We could only go back so many times, and then they went back and they redid that. But that was involved a lot more money that was, than that involved hundreds of thousands of right, dollars. Right, that so, involved a lot more money. So as it is, we couldn't do the two years even if we wanted to. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Exactly. But uh, again, our, our assessors, they do a great job, but they are human beings. There's 10,000, I don't know how many properties there are in town. There's, 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 there's about, there's, 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 there's eight to 10,000 properties in town. They have to assess them all down to the dollar and cent. And there are going to be mistakes. I can guarantee it. But that's why you need to check your ta property card to make sure that it's accurate. Yeah. And, and this one, this one, it sounds like, is it was a mad just a matter of his property is on one side of the road and the other property was on the other side, so it was just a misplaced, you know, street number. Right. You know, so it wasn't like the assessor went in there and found something that wasn't there or anything like that. It was just a misplaced street number led to it. Did we ever did we ever discover did the person who actually had the new yeah, that kitchen funny. did they ever get yeah, they did, did change. Yeah, okay. when, we, when we did it the first time, well, well, Alex said they were. Yeah. <laughs> so, do they get charged the one year? Yeah. So do they get charged? Yeah, I was just gonna say. Do they we get Does it go the opposite way? I think no. They, no. Yeah. Maybe we get a supplement, but I'd have to go back to the record and double check. I can, because were they charged for the same two years that that Willie was charged for the same two years? No, they weren't charged. They were charged. Well, they should be. They'll get a. They should get a supplement, or they. I just don't remember. Yeah, I, I I would have thought there was a supplement, but. No, I don't remember. Because one would offset yeah. the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. James, anything else? That completes my report. All right, any questions for the town manager? All right, psych board communications. There is just one. Where did it go? It's just. It was just there. It is just a letter from um, Comcast saying that starting in July, the price of stars will be eight nine ninety nine instead of eight ninety nine. So for those of you who still pay for cable, you're gonna pay more if you have stars. No. I thought you were gonna say HBO changed their name. No, <laughs> no, no, that was the last meeting we got that. But it went yeah, yeah. HBO, now, HBO, now it's HBO Max. Max is just Max. Yeah. All right, uh, approval of the warrants. We have three. 
All right, we have a payroll warrant number 83 from June 15th, 2023, in the amount of $80,819.52. Uh, accounts payable warrant number 84 from June 20th, 2023, in the amount of $280,170.24. And payroll warrant number 85 from June 22nd, 2023, in the amount of $84,191.10. I make the motion that we pay our bills. All those in favor? Sure. Pass those down to Lisa. All right. New business. Uh, naming of town property policy. We have the request the for way. the um, B field at Memorial Field for Denny Moore. Um, we wanted to put in a, a policy in place. Uh, this came from another community. I thought it was pretty simple and straightforward. It just um, going to have some significance to the town, held a leadership role, or some other con contribution to the town. Just lays out that that process and um, how to do it in the future. Um, I think for um, the memorial field request, we can have that public hearing on the 18th. Um, and while we're at it, um, added in a process for bench dedication. And I, I put in $1,000 as, as a starting point, if that makes sense. I think the total cost for a bench and a plaque would be more like uh, $1,250. So we could do that if we want to do the whole. Well, that, that you also have to figure in. You're going to need to uh, do work for a base, concrete base yeah. and stuff. So but rather than have $1,000 or any figure there, is you know, a check to cover the costs you know, yeah. associated with it or something along that line. Yeah, that. I mean, theoretically, we already have six. We're going to dedicate one to Eleanor. So we have five that probably could seed fund the next several yeah. thousand. I'll speak for one. Yeah. What, in, in your name? <laughs> the Wright family? Yep. All right. Any questions about the naming of uh, public property with memorial objects? No. no. Naming town-owned property and placement of memorial objects. Mark, this is pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like Tom said, I think I would just Take change out the change out the, the exact amount on bench dedication and just upon approval, you know, submit to cover costs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. By persons or groups, if two people want to get together and dedicate half a bench together, and, you know, that's between them and God. Half a bench. Yep. Any further discussion about this? Wait about under policy, how you know it's saying naming. Should we say or, or renaming? Would we ever have a renaming? Naming or renaming? It's up to you. Probably. Probably. Not in that um, lifetime, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we could probably get rid of renaming. I think maybe one of those policies they had a, a time limit on it, but I don't. It doesn't make sense to have a. Yeah, I mean, if if they're gonna rename something that we named fifty years from now, then that board can make that decision <laughs> yeah. instead of us. Yeah. Um, renaming. Is I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. Is there anything about um, refusing? Maybe groups that might be a little bit more offensive to the public from putting something out. I don't want to see something it. in there that says the well, I mean, if you look has at, final approval. Of yeah, all. I mean, yeah. If, if you look at what the qualifications are to name it after them, I mean. Well, I just don't want any symbols from the mid 1930s coming into play it's here. It's because. like board should hold a public hearing and the proposed naming and vote to approve. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that. Yeah. yeah, just want to make sure that there's no no slippery slots. Yeah. No, I, I get you. Yeah. There's a certain group of people that would love to just slip in here, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, all right. And they make a contribution to the town. I, <laughs> Doesn't that sound like, yeah. you know, so. I would like to make a motion that we approve the policy with the amendments as enumerated. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Uh, next, downtown draining project bid results. 
We received one bid for $955,916. Um, our engineer is working with our contractor to get uh, kind of go over some of the variables, see if we can work on cost. It may come down a bit, but not significantly. So we do have some ARPA funds allocated for this. We will need to use some of the earmarked funding for it. Um, so this project needs to be done this winter to keep the CAX project, the school street um, sawmill alignment uh, on track for May of 2024. So um, we can work with that contractor and see if we can get the cost down. Who was the contractor? It's Curtis Earth Earthworks. Curtis. They're a borough based yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't say the numbers are a surprise. I mean, every bridge that needs to get redone is going to be a million dollars yeah. more. The MS-15, yeah. whatever project it was, I can remember what it was. Okay. MS-4, that, that project was going to be a million and a quarter, million and a half to just do that. So I can't be surprised that this draining project's almost a million. Um, how much ARPA funds do we have set aside for it? Do we have the full amount? About 400000 Okay. And then we have that the CDS funding or the earmark. That is $3 million. Okay. So I'll have to use some of that $3 million. Um, Do you need a, a vote to approve the bid? Um, I think I can come back with a revised cost estimate and we can approve it at that point okay. With, okay. with the actual number. It, could you get something maybe more itemized? Absolutely. Absolutely. Please. The, the primary driver is the 60 inch pipe and box culverts. Yeah. That's. I was watching a video the other day about a six, uh, with a 60-inch pipe and a flood just going right through it. And I'm like, like that'll hold up. That'll, it didn't hold up. It went all over the place. <laughs> just like, but, but it took in whole trees, just went right through it. And just like, oh. yeah. You hope you don't have one of those floods in your lifetime, but they happen. Down south, it's getting that hard. Yeah. All right, so that will be tabled for a future vote. Um, election of select board chair and vice chair. Not me. <laughs> I'll go there. Why do you always this, start with that? This is not a game of who can touch the nose first, okay? <laughs> um, I make a motion uh, for Noah for chair. One second that. One second that. I will accept and, and, and perform the duties. So, um, all those in favor? You can vote for yourself. <laughs> all right, I'll vote for myself. There, it's unanimous. Linda, do you wish I mean, to continue as vice chair? Like I will. All right, I'll make the motion to uh, uh, vote for Linda's vice chair. We'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And the entrenched politicians do it again. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for holding that spot one more time. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I feel bad for, for Linda. She doesn't have anything to do because I come to every meeting. So. He does. That's been pretty easy. <laughs> um, no abatements or supplements. Yeah. No second public comment because there's no public to talk. Uh, we do have an executive session for discussion of personnel. We will not be making any decisions, so we will be leaving this meeting and not coming back. Um, does anybody have any other business, non-agenda items to discuss? Yeah, I have one more rant. Go ahead. <laughs> um, is concern, concerning the, the edge, the former ta prime tanning property, um, is a post on the unofficial page last week of no, the getting ready to do the paving work, and there's quite a bit of response to that. Um, I just like to set the record straight for some of the things that were said in there. Is you know, first off, is the tannery closed in 2008? Is the ownership of the property was awarded to Fund of Jupiter, a gentleman named Mark Cahaya. Um, he multi-millionaire worth more than all of Burlington together um, and we tried to work with him over a long period of time to do something over there and it wasn't nothing was getting done um, we came up with the idea of applying for uh, cleanup funds through the Department of Environmental Protection and we wrote several grants we got how much money do we get out of that close to Two million, yeah, two, two million. million dollars to clean it up, but in the process of doing that, we as a town had to take possession of it because the funds weren't available to uh, private 
person is we took control of it, we did the cleanup, and then we turned it back over to the Fund of Jupiter. There's a lot of people are saying we gave the property away. We did not give the property away. Is, and then there's a lot of people discussing what's going in there. For the last 10 years, we've had probably 15 or 20 public hearings down here. <laughs> yeah, there have been five or six different design iterations of it. It's been changing constantly. Is, several years ago, we were fortunate enough to make contact with Great Falls Construction, a nice company out of Maine here, family owned. They do a lot of high-end redevelopment. They came down, they listened to our presentation, they were interested, they were very excited with what's going on in Berwick, with the Envision Berwick group, and all the excitement of wanting to do something down here. They came to an agreement and bought the property from Fund of Jupiter, is, um, and since then, they've been spending a lot of their money into it. This is a company that's going to be putting up to $50 million of their money into Berwick. Is, I, I want to stress that again. $50 million of their money. If people don't like what's going on down there, where were you during all of the public hearings? Is... is Great Falls Construction has been here many times. They listened to us. They wanted to work with us, and they have. They've designed a downtown area that is not strip malls. It's not big, flashy buildings. It's going to be things that match our town. Are there going to be? Is there going to be more traffic? Yes, there is. But is there's going to be more traffic no matter what? Is the thing we need to do is to keep working and planning on this and we'll make it work is <clears throat> uh, like I said I've been doing this for 10 years and I hear the same lies over and over and over again we did not give the property away and we worked with the people of Broward to design what's going in there and you know I cannot stress enough how glad I am that we are finally getting this done because when that tannery was sitting over there, is the fire chief and I talked many times about what would have happened if that had gone up in flames and we would have lost all of the downtown, including probably the town hall here. So for the people that say, oh, I wish the building was there, I wish another thing changed, well, I won't go there. <laughs> and, uh, so, just my little rant. Thank you for that. For the record, I agree with everything you said, having been here for about half of that. I saw, you know, we dealt with the owner, we dealt with the cleanup, and we dealt with finding a buyer, and and all the meetings. There were tons of meetings where people could come and talk to the, to the developers and tell them what they wanted and what they didn't want and what they hoped for. There was plenty of public input. I, I watched them all. There's plenty of public input. This was not done fly by night operation, I promise you. Yeah. Um, and, and Tom, when you say that about things on social media, was there, and I'm being probably generous, 50 people out of what's the population of Berwick? 8,000. Yeah. That probably either liked it or made a comment or looked at it. Um, unfortunately, those are the people that, that get the attention. Um, but you're right, it's been everywhere. I, I mean, We've also heard a lot of uh, positive comments. They're just not the people that are posting them. Yeah. And and going back to the earlier conversation about voting, I mentioned it every meeting for like three months. Mm -hmm. It was on Berwick TV. It was in the newsletter. It was in the school newsletter. We put out signs out front. It happens every year. There's notices in. I mean, the the the, the news flyer was in the post office and in the, at the yeah. dump, I believe, and in the town hall. If you don't have access to the internet, TV, you know, mail, there's not much more we can really do. Right. Really, there's not. And trust me, we want everybody to come out and vote. We say it every time. We've had a couple elections where it was like less than 200 people come out to vote. Yeah. And that's really disappointing. If you think 400 is bad, 200 is just demoralizing. It is. I mean, I, I was 
worked late and I didn't get here until I think it was like 7.30 and I came in and I'm like, oh, you guys must have been really crazy busy. She looked at me and she just went, and I, was, I think I was ballot number like 429 or yeah. 427 or something like that. And I'm just, wow. If you I guys... Mean, for that, so I get it. But the thing is, is you're exactly right. There's always an election in June, especially with the school budget. And, and people, people who've lived in Burwark for decades know that. At least they should. They should. Why the, now? The the reality is, if you're interested in what's going on in town, it goes on all year long. It doesn't happen in just one vote. Right. Don't become just interested when it comes up to a vote and then complain that you missed it. Because there's a lot going on all, all year long. Yep. Any other, any other comments? I'll make a motion that we enter executive session for discussion of personnel under Title One. 4056A. I'll second that. And all in favor? Good night to the public. <laughs>